ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our MC, a native of New Orleans, not only an inspirational product of Catholic schools, but also a nationally renowned television personality and former National Catholic Educational Association board member, Andrea Rohn. Good evening. Good evening, please take your seats. Shh. We're ready to start our program. And again, you can enjoy your first course. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we celebrate the 22nd NCEA St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Awards. And I'm pleased to celebrate the 21st time that I've served as MC of this wonderful evening. Thank you. It is a great pleasure to be part of this annual event that celebrates Catholic education across our nation. We have a great evening in store for you, and it's my pleasure to start the festivities by introducing the president of the National Catholic Education Association. Please welcome Dr. Karen Risto. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you. And may I add my welcome uh, it's delightful to be with you and to see you all this evening. You know, when I was first a teacher, which you might imagine was not exactly yesterday, a very wise person teacher told me that I should always keep in mind that good teaching is about making connections between the subject matter and the student, between the student's experience and who or what the student already knows. And so I tried. And following that advice is probably the reason that I spent most of my professional life in Catholic education, because it provides the freedom to make connections between my own faith, my awareness of God in my life with the students that I was teaching. And now I look for connections between people and see how I can introduce people who I think should know other people, uh, who they, I think they should know. But a bit ago, I was sitting at my desk thinking about tonight's honorees and my tendency to see connections. And look what I saw. Look what I noticed. Tonight's Seton honorees present some rather surprising and remarkable connections without ever knowing one another. These people have ties to one another. They have college and university backgrounds in common. At one time or another, they had some kind of geographical relationship to certain places, and they've helped a few of the same schools and dioceses. And in some very delightful ways, they have connections to people at NCEA to the extent that Cardinal O'Malley baptized the brother of one of our staff members. Now, I think this says something rather important about us as a people. And it also tells you something about NCEA. NCEA does a lot of things, but we are very good at making connections. Would you take a moment and watch this video that tells you more about our story of leadership, of service, and how we promote connections quite deeply with all those people in our ministries. Thank you. Promoting. The National Catholic Educational Association is a premier professional membership organization promoting Catholic educational excellence and awareness. As the largest private educational network in the United States, NCEA serves all the educational ministries of the church, from elementary and secondary schools to seminaries, parish schools of religion to parish catechists, and from diocesan administrators to boards of education. 
Founded in 1904, NCEA serves as both a facilitator and a home for national education conversations with widespread and local impacts. Leadership is central to NCEA's mission. The website I find very attractive. Our definition of leadership focuses on growth of others and leadership to build community. The association often serves as the main spokesperson for Catholic education because we have that ability to gather information about what's going on across the nation in schools, parishes, colleges, and seminaries. What would you think about it? Our leadership toward building community provides networks for people to come together. These networks give NCEA the capacity to be strong advocates in the public policy arena being sure students in Catholic schools and their parents receive the benefits to which they're legally entitled. The leadership provided by NCEA inspires and influences others to join together and then in turn to lead others in their ministry, which is the call to spread the message of the gospel, the message of God's love. Leadership is also advanced through programs that recognize exceptional educators and major supporters of Catholic education and the well-being of our nation's youth. The individuals and institutions honored by the association reflect our mission and serve as role models so that others may follow in their footsteps. Our job is to keep people at the top of their game. We do that through our publications, our programs, webinars, as well as our personal correspondence with people. NCEA continuously provides for the professional growth of its membership by offering an outstanding annual convention and convocation and a host of engaging learning events throughout the year. We are able to gather people and bring them together in a variety of settings and let them know that they are part of something bigger, that they're part of the church, that they're not in this alone. That has tremendous power and tremendous value. When someone walks into our convention and they walk into that arena and they see 10,000 people, there's a connection that takes place there that only NCEA can provide. The written word of God. Gracious and merciful God, our master teacher. John's Gospel says, in the beginning was the word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. NCEA keeps the founding principle of its mission statement rooted in the Gospel of Jesus Christ at the center of all its activities and is a direct response to the Gospel imperative, go. Teach all nations. These are the three categories that are in the New Testament. The Catholic teacher in a parochial school is not just simply a master of his or her profession. Dividing both sides by five. What's your favorite word out of all of those? But also someone who is a witness to the faith. And I think the NCEA, through its outreach, its various programs, has that same holistic vision. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to have head knowledge. It's also important to have heart knowledge. We compare those ratios, they will actually be the same. Education for Life, uh, I think, is getting at a very important concept, which is that our relationship with the Lord is a lifelong relationship, so it's ongoing formation. We're not just preparing students to take their place in the world and in the church. We are preparing them to live lives as good and holy people. NCEA represents the collective strength of its members. Together, we all are ambassadors for excellence in Catholic education. NCEA, committed to a strong Catholic identity in all our educational programs and providing leadership, direction, and service for educators serving at all levels of Catholic education. introduce Archbishop Wilton Gregory, the Archbishop of Atlanta, the chair of our board of directors, who will lead us in our blessing. Archbishop? I would like to join my voice with that of Dr. Ristow and welcoming all of you 
to this gala and in thanking all of you for your wondrous and generous support for Catholic education in the United States. I congratulate all of those who will be honored, Robert Conway and Lee Ann Cosma, and of course, His Eminence, Cardinal Sean O'Malley. But I thank all of you for the work that you do so generously and so effectively each and every day in serving the young people of our nation. I thank you for your excellence in caring for the young people entrusted to you. And this evening, as we close the day devoted to St. Therese of Lisieux and anticipate the day devoted to the guardian angels, let us ask both of them as they cross time zones to be present with us and to bless the young people that we try to serve so generously and so effectively that we ask St. Therese to watch over the little ones that we care for and the guardian angels to protect those that are entrusted to us. We ask the Lord to be present with us in our assembly this evening and to bless the food that we will share in the conversation that will encourage us. This evening, if Karen will allow me, I would like to provide a paid political announcement to the wonderful people of the Archdiocese of Atlanta that I am so privileged to serve and to care for. They, along with all of the local dioceses here present, are the reason that Catholic schools are so successful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Gracious and generous Father, we ask you to be present here this evening in our gathering and in our celebration. We ask your blessing on the endeavors that we offer to care for the little ones, the children, those that Jesus himself loved in a special way. We ask you to bless the food that we share, the conversation that enriches us, and the future that lies ahead of us. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you, Archbishop Gregory. Please enjoy your first course, but we are ready for the presentation of the 2012 NCEA St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Awards. I had the pleasure of serving on the board of the Catholic University of America with our first honoree, Cardinal Sean O'Malley, the Archbishop of Boston. And he has done wonderful things for the Catholic education there. Let's watch this video about the Cardinal's commitment. I'd say Cardinal Sean has been committed since the day he arrived in Boston, if not before. Uh, when, during the course of his installation as the Archbishop of Boston, prior to his becoming a Cardinal, uh, in his installation speech he spoke uh, about the importance of the Catholic schools here in Boston and across America. He made the very powerful observation that uh, the Catholic school system in the United States is the second largest, second only to the public school system, and that it was a very important part of the DNA of our Catholic faith and our mission. There was a time when uh, three pastors from one of the poorer cities in the Archdiocese, Brockton, Massachusetts, came to the Cardinal and uh, said, here are the keys to our schools. 
we're down to about 100 students in each. We can no longer afford to be in the business. And he called and uh, I assembled a group and we uh, went down to Brockton and that was the beginning of a brand new model. Uh, today, instead of 100 students in each of three schools, we closed one and now we have 582 students in two schools and uh, they are world class. Uh, the kids are proud to be there. We have a glee club, we have sports teams, we have programs for gifted and talented kids. So I would say that that was uh, at least my first experience in seeing Cardinal Sean's commitment to the importance of Catholic education. Cardinal Sean uh, reminds me in many ways of a quote that's often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, it's not clear that it actually came from St. Francis of Assisi, but uh, be that as it may, the quote goes something like this. Uh, Preach the gospel at all times, even if you have to use words. And uh, that was almost written, even though it was hundreds of years before, for our Cardinal, Cardinal Sean. It's the way he lives his life. It's the way he uh, practices his faith, as opposed to any words that he might use. He's really a man of few words but lots of important and powerful and effective actions. Well, we were honored uh, a couple of years back and we were grateful for that honor, but we, uh, we didn't go into this to be honored. We went into it because uh, of the lesson of the Good Samaritan. If you remember, uh, as that story goes, uh, several people passed a man who had been beaten and robbed and uh, kind of ignored his plight until one man a man who happened to be from Samaria, uh, decided that he would take this person, uh, pick him up and bring him, help him to a local inn. And he told the innkeeper, here are three pieces of silver. Uh, take care of his every need. And then if, uh, if you're short, the next time I come through, I'll make up the difference. And uh, all too often today, we pass by uh, it's not the man that's been beaten and robbed, but it may very well be the child that's been ignored or the school that's uh, threatened with closure. And uh, we designed a new model that doesn't put as much pressure on the priest because the priest, the pastor is not necessarily 45 years of age anymore. He's probably closer to 68 on average, at least in Boston. And uh, one can't expect a gentleman of 68 years of age to be a foremost authority on pedagogy. So we created a model where there's a great deal of uh, support. We say that the, uh, the church, uh, the parish, owns the property and the pastor is responsible to make sure that the religion is taught in a way that he wishes. But all the other responsibilities, the governance, the maintenance, etc., fall on these uh, boards that we set up on a regional basis. And we've gone into the poorest markets of the city uh, of Boston, Dorchester, Massachusetts, or into Brockton, Massachusetts, and we've recognized that some of these old red brick schoolhouses have great bones, but that's about it. So typically we gut them, we put in new windows, we put in new boilers. We were able to ascertain something that we didn't realize before, that the Catholic Church must be the world's largest purchaser of duct tape because if you go into the boiler room of these schools you'll find there's an awful lot of duct tape. And uh, we rebuilt them and uh, brought new leadership to these schools, new energy. And uh, it's a reminder that all things are possible. And it's really nothing more than the example of the Good Samaritan. Please welcome William Burke, Head of School at St. Sebastian's in Needham, Mass, who will help us honor Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Wendell Berry writes that a teacher's major contribution may pop out anonymously in the life of some ex-student's grandchild. So much of what I and countless others have learned from Cardinal Sean may not have even manifested itself yet. The rest is more felt than understood and more understood 
than expressible in words, but please allow me to give it a shot in this brief introduction of an eminently holy man of God. On a gorgeous day this past summer, my wife and I took two of our grandchildren to a park in suburban Wellesley, Massachusetts. Patty and seven-year-old Liam went down one path, and four-year-old Isla and I followed another. After a short time, Isla let me know, with no small degree of urgency, that she needed to visit a restroom. Frantically, I looked around, and the nearest possible sight my eyes fell upon was St. Paul's Roman Catholic Church on the other side of busy Route 16. When it was safe, we crossed the street, my heart pounding, hoping against hope that the church door would be unlocked in the middle of a summer's weekday afternoon. I pulled, and the huge doors swung open. Euphoric, I sang out, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> And little Isla repeated, thank you, Jesus. We blessed ourselves with holy water. And as we made our way down the darkened center aisle, Isla asked, where's Jesus? Right there, I answered, pointing to the large, beautiful crucifix suspended above the altar. No, she said, the one who talks. The one who talks, these four words capture the vocation, the mission, the beauty and the truth of our shepherd and my friend, Cardinal Sean Patrick O'Malley, OFMCAP. The one who talks for the clergy and the laity of Boston and the world beyond, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Cardinal Sean grew up in a large, devout Roman Catholic family in Ohio and Pennsylvania, was professed into the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin in 1965, and ordained a priest in 1970. By 1978, he had earned an MA in religious education and a PhD in Spanish and Portuguese at the Catholic University of America right here in our nation's capital. He has served as Bishop of the Virgin Islands, as Bishop of Fall River, Massachusetts, as Bishop of Palm Beach, Florida, and since 2003, thanks be to God, as Archbishop of Boston, for dire indeed was our need for the best and the brightest. That our Archbishop, who was named a Cardinal in 2006, has provided healing and exquisite leadership in his role as the one who talks for us is a powerfully beautiful, self-evident truth. One of his flock holds him in especially high degree. My wife, Patty, who happens to be an intellectual, pro-life, Roman Catholic, PhD, licensed clinical psychologist. And sadly, there seems to be precious few of those. A few years ago, when I shared with her my opinion that Cardinal Sean had recently made a particularly good decision, Patty responded, all of the Cardinal's decisions have been good ones. Sometime later, when I repeated this anecdote at a fairly large social gathering in honor of his eminence, Cardinal Sean sang out in that baritonic stentorian cadence, oh, Patty, do I like you. Teach and be taught, urges Seneca. Cardinal Sean teaches so naturally and so well. What a gift I received a few years ago when I served as confirmation sponsor for one of my St. Sebastian students on a Sunday afternoon with his eminence presiding. During his homily, Cardinal Sean focused his remarks on the difference between fun and joy, offering that fun as seen on MTV, spring break can be very shallow, short-lived, and potentially devastating, whereas joy, which comes from God, who is love, is always deep, eternal, pure, 
and supremely good. And what do you think I shared with attribution, of course, the next day with my St. Sebastian School community in our corporate chapel ceremony over which, as headmaster, I'm privileged to preside every Monday morning, teach and be taught. Those closest to Cardinal Sean can be caught saying very nice things about him behind his back. Listen to what his secretary, Father Bob Kickham, has to say. The Cardinal is highly intelligent, having achieved academic recognition at many levels and mastered at least six languages other than English, some through self-study. He reads as much as possible in history, literature, and biography, and stays current with regard to international events by regularly reading a variety of international news publications. <clears throat> and here are the words of Tom Hannigan, an outstanding attorney of Ropes and Gray in Boston and a St. Sebastian's past parent. Bill, I have thought about your request and reflected on the two decades I have been working with Cardinal Sean, both here in Boston and in Fall River. I was also privileged to accompany him during his visitation on behalf of the Holy Father to Ireland last year. It is very hard to distill that experience and my affection for him into short compass. But if I had to mention one thing that stands out about the Cardinal, it is how tensely intensely and passionately, he is committed to the education and protection of our children. Assuring the safety and well-being of our young is his paramount priority. It is for this and a host of other reasons that I am so proud to introduce His Eminence, Cardinal Sean P. O'Malley. Please help me welcome Cardinal Sean. Thank you very much. Uh, it's kind of like attending your own wake, I think, you know. <laughs> Everyone says all these uh, wonderful things about you, and <laughs> I hope some of it's true anyway. A uh, couple of years ago, a large brown manila envelope arrived in the mail, and it was addressed to me with very beautiful penmanship, Palmer method. I immediately recognize it as my dad's. I opened it up and inside, I discovered that my 89-year-old father had sent me my report cards from first grade all the way through college. Uh, I was very touched to see that he had saved all of his children's report cards. And now at 89, when he thought he had a 20-minute life expectancy was sharing these treasures with us, but it certainly brought home to me how important our Catholic school education was to our parents and certainly to all of us who had the good fortune to go to Catholic schools. And I went to Catholic primary school, secondary school, college, graduate school. And until I got to graduate school, all of my teachers were religious. And I think we need to say that our Catholic school systems would not exist without the many sacrifices of our religious women. And uh, And they have taught us that sacrifice is what is needed to be able to run these wonderful schools. And now we have our lay teachers and administrators who at great personal sacrifice dedicate themselves.